Are we live? <laughs> is it live yet? Is it happening? Going live, maybe. Maybe not. God, you're you're live! Yeah! Woohoo! <laughs> Hello, guys. How are you guys doing? Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, um, so we're welcome to our second live video. If you guys remember, we did a live video on Sunday last week. And thank you so much for joining then. We had loads of amazing travel questions and we can't do the same for you guys this week. So if we are just meeting for the first time, I'm Laura and he's Robin. And we're the team behind backpackerguide.nz. And backpackerguide.nz is New Zealand's largest travel guide. So we do consider ourselves, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty much experts when it comes to traveling in New Zealand, whether it's coming for short trips, extended trips, camper van road trips, bus travel, backpacker, vacations and holidays, anything to do with traveling in New Zealand. That is what we specialize in and we're super passionate about it. So we can't wait to answer all your travel questions. All right, so today we're gonna to go over quite a lot of questions that we already have right here prepared by a lot of you guys that send us uh, questions on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and right here on YouTube. So uh, let's quickly go through our handles everywhere. So Laura, handle on Facebook. So on Facebook, it is Backpacker Guide NZ. Uh, what about on, uh, what is it, Instagram? Um, that's at backpackerguide.nz. Twitter. On Twitter, it is BPK, capital G for guide. So BPK guide. Okay. Tw Twitter's always a funny one with all those limited characters. Kills me. And on YouTube, you can find us right here and you can ask us all your questions. So there's already a few people live. That's awesome. Hi, Natalia. How are you doing? And hi, Sojin. Sojin, I think that's the first time we meet. That's the first time you pop in. Where are you from, man? Just tell us, uh, tell us where you're from. Uh, all right, cool. So you guys know that we uh, love uh, going right into it and we don't like to do a million different uh, introductions. So we've already probably spent the last two minutes doing introductions. So let's get into it and let's go through questions. Now, now since Natalia is here, I know she sent us a bunch of questions and I'm going to go through them. All right, Natalia. Uh, all right. All right. First question today from Natalia. You're going to do the last name? Frakzek. Frakzek. <laughs> All right. First question of the day. Natalia asks us, is the tap water safe to drink in New Zealand? Laura. Hells to the yeah. Actually, the tap water in New Zealand is really good. Um, it's, yeah, there, there's a lot of water that's actually taken straight from spring water, then maybe has a bit of treatment, but it's, yeah, not much. It's actually super safe to drink tap water in New Zealand. And yeah, it's actually better too. It's better than actually buying bottled water and, you know, destroying the planet and all that. So it's really encouraged in, in New Zealand to have your own water bottle and keep refilling it up in tap water. Water. And quite a few people do drink water from like streams and creeks in New Zealand. But I would say just to double check its um, safety, if you are on long hikes, make sure you boil the water first. And that's actually what the Department of Conservation, which runs all the, the, the hikes and stuff in New Zealand, that's what they would recommend to do as well, just in case, because you never know what could be in the water. Um, usually it's safe to drink, but just in case. Yeah, I would take precautions. There's also a really cool thing called a life straw. Um, maybe we'll link up to it. We'll put yeah. the Amazon link or something Actually, in I the can, description if below. If I can pop in right here, yeah. rather than getting a life straw, get yourself those life straw bottle, yeah. which is so much easier. Since you're going to want to carry a bottle of water all around, you know, when you travel around, well, they do those bottles that have the life straw literally inside. So it's it's like it's like a bottle of water that you carry around. <laughs> but it has the live straw in and you just replace the cartridge, I think is every 1000 liter. This is really a lifesaver when traveling around the world. And that would make it so easy for you to make your way around New Zealand. And, you know, let's say you're hiking for a few days, you can just refill this bottle of water in a little creek and you can drink it and you're, you're really safe. I think it is, it's eliminating about 99.9999%. 99 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's really something that we do really love. And I'm the one that actually drinks from creek. Every single time I see a creek or something, I'm like, can I drink from it when we go on top of a glacier? Can I drink from it? So I always drink from almost everything. New Zealand is a rather pure country. Let's be honest. Um, it's not, you know, absolutely perfect because, well, you know, there are pollutions everywhere. But 
it is rather pure. So if you get yourself those live straw bottle, I, I can't face enough how amazing those things are. And I think they're like $46 or something. So we'll put a link in the description below for you guys. That's a good thing to do. But other than that, just to you know wrap it up about the tap water, it is perfectly safe to drink the tap water in New Zealand. If in very rare occasion, there is a tap which is not safe to drink. There will be a big sign above it. There are a few times, especially along some walks, when you have some huts where there are some taps, you know, for water. And it, there is a huge sign saying on it, boil it before you cook or you drink it. So everywhere in New Zealand, tap water safe to drink, except in very rare occasion when there is a bright orange, yellow, or red sign above the tap that you cannot um that you cannot miss so yeah that's pretty much it for um for tap water yeah, you can drink it tap water in a nutshell yeah exactly oh. if you have any follow-up questions anything in the live chat in the comments below make sure you give us questions we answer them right now or next week we're here all the time all right let's take the time to say hi to the chat uh hi elvin how are you doing today milena and elvin is asking us a question already all right so elvin is us is it easy to find asian food around auckland that's the best place in new zealand to find asian food there's so much of it it's yeah auckland has a really awesome asian food scene yeah. i'd say there's a really awesome korean restaurant on queen street which i really like it's the one which is right opposite of the cinema on queen street it's really awesome i can't remember the name but really good food and you can get a lot of those little korean nibbles and everything for yeah. rather cheap there's a mongolian grill which i really love yeah there's a japanese bar as well which has, does really awesome food yeah. too i think that's on queen street too you sushi's find... everywhere yeah, sushi's sushi's plentiful. Everywhere. bubble teas if you are into bubble teas I which know. is really typically asians there are quite a few cafes like i'm thinking of hulu cat for example that has that um, if you're into some of those Asian pancakes, you know, which are like savory kind mm, of pancakes, there's yeah. something called number one pancakes, which actually features in one of our uh, video. And uh, it yeah. is really, really yummy and super cheap. I think that was like five bucks. Five dollars for a pancake. And they're pretty big pancakes yeah. as well. And you can get, yeah, either savory or sweet. And they're super cheap. They're actually one of our cheap eats in Auckland yeah. that we list on the article. And we'll make sure to... Put that in the description below when we do the rebroadcast of this video as well. Yeah, so there is plenty of Asian food in Auckland. You are not going to be feeling, uh, well, not at home. I'm yeah, telling you right now, sure. you're going to eat really well. And there's also lots of Asian supermarkets as well. There's Indian supermarkets. There's, yeah, you can find a lot of products that you would find in Asian countries in specialized supermarkets if you want to do any of your home cooking and stuff. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like we almost forgot India is in Asia, so maybe you mean Indian food. Yes, there is heaps of Indian food as well. There are actually some famous kind of uh, chain uh, Indian restaurants, but obviously, you know, they're, they're much more mild and everything like that. But there are quite a lot of, um, you know, smaller restaurants, Indian restaurants, which, you know, are really good. And the good thing is that usually Indian restaurants are rather cheap. So if you go for lunch, for example, you will be able to have like a full meal for between 10 to 15 dollars which is which is rather cheap for new zealand standards so asian food in Auckland, hell yeah plenty for all sure. right um so we've got some more questions possibly coming <coughs> up no 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 he's I, uh, theo 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 uh, i don't know how to pronounce your name uh he just bought a plane ticket to new zealand so he's really excited Sweet. and he has a question but it's not he didn't my question it. is dot 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 we'll see <laughs> <Suspense>. later <laughs> Uh, Milena, she's in Auckland for today only. They have three boys, 9, 12, and 13, and ready to experience the beautiful hike. We have our headset on Waikiki. Any specific tips? Oh, so um, you are... Okay, let oh, me just... Oh, white, white to carry. Not white to carry. Oops, yeah. sorry. All right, let me just recap the question quickly. So Milena is on YouTube right now, and she asks, we are in Auckland for today only. We have three boys, ages 9, 12, and 13, and ready to experience a beautiful hike. We have our heads set on Waitakere. Any specific tips, Laura? Well, I would jump to a tip right now, which is that make sure the hikes that you want to go on are actually open at the moment because there's um, a lot of kauri trees, which are the largest types of trees in New Zealand, and they they're found all over the Waitakere ranges. But unfortunately, there has been a lot of track closures because these trees have actually sort of been... Um, 
like destroyed a little bit by the trucks and by a lot of people visiting those places. So the Auckland Council has um, has actually closed some of those tracks down, which is really awesome. It means that they're actually really working hard on preserving the natural environment around those areas. But you do have to really do quite a bit of research before just going on a track um, just to make sure that it's open. For instance, one of the really popular hikes is in Piha and it's to um, <coughs> some waterfalls. I think they're called the Kitty Kitty Falls. But unfortunately, you can't go there anymore. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, I'm actually trying to think of what tracks are still open. There's still loads. There's still loads, don't get me wrong. You just have to really double check if they're actually yeah. open. Yeah, definitely. I mean, otherwise, if you are in Auckland um, and you're in Auckland Central, um, honestly, don't drive. Just hop onto one of those ferry. Um, if you go to the pier and uh, you hop on the ferry, uh, you go grab a Fuller's, uh, Fuller's Pass. They actually have Family Pass, which is going to make it really cheap for you. And you head to Rangitoto Island. Super easy walk, amazing. You get you get uh, a lot of volcanic activities. You have some volcanic caves. You have some lava fields. You're also in the middle of the beautiful native New Zealand bush. And then when you arrive on top, again, it's about an hour and a half at max. Um, when you arrive on top, you have beautiful view of the whole Haraki Gulf. You see all the islands. You see the beautiful Auckland skyline. It's really amazing. It's a great way to kind of you know, in my, my personal favorite hike to do in Auckland yeah. because it's super short, super easy. You get a cruise, you get, you know, there's so many different stuff. And since you're traveling with kids, well, they may want a lot of different stuff. You know, they're not necessarily going to like to be sitting in the traffic for quite a while and then just doing, in a way to carry, they're beautiful hike, don't get me wrong, but they usually just hike around kind of the same-ish forest for the whole time or the same-ish coastal line for the whole time. Well, if you go to Rangitoto, you get so many different stuff. Plus you get a ferry ride, which is always cool. So I personally feel that it's definitely worth it. And to be quite honest, it will be much faster to do that rather than try to drive out of Auckland and come back. So if you're around the Auckland uh, CBD, so Central, I would definitely do uh, Rangitoto. Yeah. If, you know, if you're willing to be swayed away from the way Takeru ranges and, and, and more into... Um, and do something slightly bit different. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, Milena. We may have uh, kind of uh, crushed the dream. Crushed, crushed, <laughs> no, not crushed the dream, but just give you another idea. Yeah, we may got would, yeah, but, yeah, for sure. I definitely would do that option as well, going to Rangitoto, yeah. because it is a little bit hit and miss with the Waitakere Ranges at the moment, knowing what is open. And I know that all the most popular hikes that people used to really love doing, they are sort of closed for the time being. So yeah. maybe Rangitoto would be best. Yeah. I, I mean, that's that's definitely my 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 pick for right now. Tell us if uh, you like that. Tell us if uh, you have any extra questions. And uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, guys, since there's so many of you right now, that's so cool. Uh, the name. Oh, she wants me to repeat. So it's I, I'm. You know what? I'll type it for you uh, when we start answering the next question. Okay. So it's good. It's Rangi Toto, but I'm gonna type it for you so you can copy and paste it. It's gonna be easier for you, Milena. All right. Cool. Um, all right. Let me just scroll back up and see some more comments. Um, so Theo or Theo. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out how to say his name. Theo. Theo. Carnes. Theo Carnes. Uh, should I bring any winter clothes like jackets or boots? I'm from Norway. And so I'm well prepared for winter, but is it worth carrying around one winter clothes for use all year round? Uh, cool. All right. Do you want to recap the question and get started yeah, on that? So Theo has just asked, should I bring any winter clothes like jackets or boots, etc.? I'm from Norway, so I'm well prepared for winter. But is it worth carrying around warm winter clothes only for use all year round? But I think he means just part of the year. Um, so I think actually, if I can, if I can clarify, yeah. he doesn't, he wants to know if he needs to carry it all around, like for the whole year, Yeah. just for a little bit, you know, he wants to know if it's going to have enough use in my opinion. Yeah. That's what, yeah. so let's see, that's what you ask, but I think that's what you ask. Yeah. So definitely for the jacket, I would definitely have a jacket. If you are planning on staying in New Zealand for the whole year, there's going to be probably about half the year that you'll want to have a jacket. Um, even in even in like the sort of spring and autumn months, when it is sunny, it's usually really warm and you don't need a jacket. But once the sun goes behind the clouds, that is when you can really feel the chill. And that, that's when it's good to have a jacket, in my opinion. As for boots, um, you don't need anything like snow boots. You don't need any like any boots that would is specifically just to keep your feet warm. The only boots I would actually pack are just hiking boots if you're into hiking and you're 
doing lots of trails, which I think, you know, people coming to New Zealand, if you're not in, even if you're not into hiking, I think it's when you come to New Zealand, it's definitely worth giving that a shot. So yeah, yeah. hiking boots, I would definitely say is a must do in your packing list. So hiking boots, yes, snow boots, no. Uh, as per your big rain jacket, uh, so yeah, big snow jacket, I think you more need a rain jacket here in New Zealand than you need a snow jacket. Like for example, we are big advocates, uh, we are really big advocate for layering. So if I were you, Theo, I would definitely just invest or if you're from Norway, we probably have some. I have some nice wool layers like those things. They are keeping me very, very warm. And I just layer one, two or three if I need. And on top of it, I have a rain uh, uh, Sorry. Uh, yeah, on top of it, I have a rain jacket. That avoids me having to pack a massive, big, big snow jacket, which I probably would use about maybe two months out of the year in New Zealand at most. Um mm. And and now having the layers just get me to do everything without having to to you know to carry these things. And if I have three different kind of thin merino wool layer like that, you know, I can wear them all year round. And I have three different kind of outfits ready. Yeah. And I just add layers if I want to. So I personally will look into layering much more rather yeah. than carrying those big heavy jackets because you're correct you're going to be traveling in new zealand apparently uh, from your question if i understand correctly you're going to be traveling around new zealand for quite an extensive period of time maybe maybe like an entire year honestly that'd be <laughs> if you pack snow boots and snow jackets and all that that'd be yeah. half your bag yeah. i don't know if i won't give half the bag for that yeah exactly um yeah so i yeah so maybe if your jackets if your snow jackets are as big and bulky as say ski jackets are then maybe leave that at home but a thing a popular thing that people do have and us as well when we were traveling around new zealand for our whole um for our whole gap year was those down jackets, which you can actually fold up to super small. So they'll give you loads of loads more heat as well when you're um, for those winter months, but they do pack up to like a super small size. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a little bit like those, uh, you know, those sleeping bags where, you know, you can pack them in like teeny tiny. Well, those down jackets do the same thing and they pack to like something yay small. Yeah. So you can either pack that from back home so like that you saw them out. You can find that on Amazon really easily. We'll put a few links for you below when we republish the video. Um, but otherwise, you can find them in stores like Mountain Warehouse or Torpedo 7 and that will cost you around yeah, like all the outdoor, bucks, yeah. all the outdoor stores in Catman New Zealand Jim. sell these. They're really, really popular types of jackets to have in New Zealand. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, that's basically our answer for uh, should you really pack those big winter jackets from Norway and those snow boots? I, I personally don't think you should. And so, here you are. I hope that answered your question, Theo. If you do have any more just go for it. Um, just go for it and just put them in the comments below. All right. Let's see a couple of extra comments. Uh, we have Elvin asking questions about Hobbiton. Uh, hi, Elvin. Um, oh, we have Manny that just joined us. Hey, Manny. How are you doing? Oh, about to come to New Zealand. That's exciting. All right. Uh, Elvin has a question. He's asked us, what is the best season to go to Hobbiton? And we do have, uh, we do actually have a very similar question about that. So, Elvin, we're going to answer your question right now. But... Through someone else, sorry. <laughs> All right. So we received this question on Facebook from Martin, and Martin said, so I just read you 23 Lord of the Rings location article, and I really want to see them all. I love the books and the movie, but I don't really have that much time in New Zealand. So if you have to pick only five, which one would you pick? All right. So Laura is the huge Lord of the Rings nerd. <laughs> so I'm going to start with talking about Hobbiton because, uh, well, although I've seen all the movies and uh, and I never read any of the books, um, although I've seen all the movies, you know, I'm kind of more in awe in front of those movie sets. So Hobbiton is definitely one of the ones that you're going to want to see. Um, it's probably like the most visited attraction in New Zealand, to be quite honest. It's super well organized. You go everywhere and, and everything is quite cool. The movie set is exactly as it was the last time uh, they shot here, which was during The Hobbit, if I'm correct. Yeah. yeah? And uh, it's a really cool place to visit. Now, it looks beautiful all year round. Let's be honest. There is not really a perfect season to visit Hobbiton because it's a movie set. It's literally made to look like whatever time of the year they want it to look like. It's always kind of a bit of an autumnish kind of look because yeah. there is always like pumpkin and those kind of things. So therefore, um, in autumn, you know, you get all the trees which are looking a little bit more autumnish and everything. So it looks quite nice. In spring as well, um, there is a lot of flowers and it looks quite good. But some of the most and some of the major kind of uh, uh, features are actually fake. 
like like the, one of the biggest trees that you can see i don't spoil too much but one of the biggest trees that you're going to see is actually entirely fake so it doesn't matter what season it is so to be quite fair it's a movie set it's meant to look exactly like how they want so there's not a perfect season to visit the hobbiton but if we have to pick some of Lord of the Rings locations to visit, I think that Hobbiton has to be on it. It's not, you know, yeah. it's not, it's, that is not even a question. If you like Lord of the Rings, then you, yeah, Hobbit is on the top of the list, yeah. I think, for most people. Um, but if, yeah, just going back to a season, maybe you would want to go visit Hobbiton during the low season in New Zealand, meaning winter. And that's because there's just less people visiting. Um, I, I like Robin said, Hobbiton is one of the biggest like tourist attractions in New Zealand. So in summer, it will be absolutely packed. They do sort of a guided tour around Hobbiton, which obviously in summer, they've got to keep on making those guided tours go, you know, round and round. So it's kind of might feel a little bit more rushed, perhaps in, su uh, in summer. I'm, I'm not 100% sure because I, I haven't done it in all seasons, but I imagine winter, there's less people, so it might feel a little bit more relaxed when you're yeah. walking around. Um, so, it, yeah, if that matters to you, then maybe winter would be the best time to go. All right, four more Lord of the Rings locations. Yeah, right? so for other Lord of the Rings locations, I think a big one is um, on the Tongariro cr Crossing, Mount Nauhoe, which is that perfectly cone-shaped mountain, and that was actually featured as Mount Doom in the Lord of the Rings. Obviously, there's a little bit of a CGI to make it look awesome and sort of blowing out lava and stuff. But um, yeah, that's just an impressive sight in itself. And you don't necessarily have to do the Tongariro Crossing to see it. There's loads of hikes around the area where you can get awesome views of Mount Nauhoe. For instance, there's a really awesome hike that I love called the Tama Lakes Hike. Um, that that, those views sort of rival that of the Tongariro Crossing. And the Tongariro Crossing is um, one of the most popular day hikes in New Zealand. So if you are looking for something maybe a little bit shorter or less crowded, then you can definitely find some awesome hikes around Mount no Nauhoe and you'll get some awesome pictures and, yeah, feel like a hobbit looking at Mount Doom. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah, another one. Uh, another one. So we only had two right here. We've yeah. been rambling so much. I, I told you guys, Laura is a nerd yeah, about sorry. that. So. <laughs> Um, all right, so another one will be Weta Workshop. This is uh, basically the studio where they've done most of the CGI for The Lord of the Rings, for The Hobbit, but for other movies like uh, District 9. Um, they actually work on Avatar right now and plenty of other movies. I'm probably missing like about 20 different. Uh, oh, uh, they've extra. done loads, yeah. yeah. They've done so many. It's really cool to visit that. Just be aware you won't be able to take any pictures or any filming during the whole um during the whole workshop tour workshop tour yeah. and uh, obviously um and obviously sorry someone just said something really funny in the comments and obviously uh if you are into just take pictures all the time well you know no sorry about that uh but yeah that's a really cool thing to visit it's actually rather cheap i was quite surprised you know compared to you know hobbiton which is a little bit steep uh, the the weta studios was actually quite cheap uh, it's definitely worth visiting if you want to understand a little bit how the movie was made so it's not necessarily the you know the location per se but it is how the movie was made which is quite cool yeah um, another one yeah so another really awesome one to go to would be mount sunday and this is in the south island it's perhaps two or three hours away from christchurch and you can either go there yourself you can drive down there there's quite a few gravel roads so just be aware of that but they tend to be easy enough to drive if you just take your time. And then there's a walk up to the top of Mount Sunday. And this whole area is where Rohan and Edoras was filmed. And the whole area is stunning in itself with beautiful mountain scenery. Um, but another option to get there is also with a Lord of the Rings tour, which actually starts in Christchurch and they transport you to Mount Sunday and they have some special sort of four wheel drive buses so that they can pretty much drive up to Mount Sunday just to like start the walk for you. And they also have lots of props. They have lots of swords and costumes and stuff. So you can take some really epic photos in front of Mount Sunday. So that's another really awesome one to go to as well. Um, All right. Next one. Fact about Baskerville. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the fi it. final one. Again, going back to the Tongariro National Park is on Mount Ruapehu. So on the Taroa Ski Field side of Mount Ruapehu, um, near the town of Oakuni, is 
the is a really awesome waterfall called Mangaferu Falls. And here is where a scene, well, Gollum's pool scene was shot, um, where Gollum is sort of catching fish by a waterfall and there's Faramir and his archers about to about to strike. And um, yeah, so that that whole area was where Gollum was sort of in the pool. And that's a, that's actually a, a Lord of the Rings location. <laughs> Robin's getting bored here. <laughs> 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 that's a lot of the rings location where you could actually see like oh my god that was definitely shot there because usually a lot of the locations they use cgi and props and stuff <laughs> <laughs> but that's enough that's enough about a lot no of no rings. i'm gonna i'm gonna go for if one you more guys want no no no, oh, no I'll do it, one more. i do one more okay, okay. you know what the funniest scene of any of this massive franchise was these barrel scenes with all those hobbits and they were going around this you know, kind of waterfall or whatever river and this torrential river and everything. It was absolutely hilarious. And most of it actually exists. It is the Pelorus River. It is in near the Marlborough Sound. It's definitely worth visiting. You can go with Pelorus Kayak, which do a kayak tour around there. It's a really awesome tour. So definitely, I know it's not the Lord of the Rings, it's more the Hobbit, but if you get to visit this one, it's really fun. Now that wraps it up. Um, <laughs> but if you did like this explanation, make sure to give us a like <laughs> in the video, in the rebroadcast specifically. That would be really helpful to us as well, just to give us a cheeky like. Um, yes, plus, plus we're going to put links to every single one of these videos because every single one of those places that we mentioned, we have a video about them. Every single one of them. We made videos for them. So you check the links, you check the video, and you're going to see if it's actually something that you dig or not. And also, we're going to link to the article, the 23 Lord of the Rings location you can't miss in New Zealand because you know, it's pretty cool. Anyway. We do have a new question right now. No, no, now. no. I want to go for this one here. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. So, Robin, go ahead with that question. <laughs> uh, Sojin, that's twice that he writes his question, so I don't want to miss it. Yeah. Um, all right. So, Sojin, which is from India, right here on YouTube, is uh, telling us that uh, well, he likes our video and we're pretty fun to watch. So, thank you. But he also <laughs> said that he is planning to do a master degree in New Zealand and he's asking us if it's a good choice. Well, studying in New Zealand is a good choice. It's a lot of fun. Um, New Zealand actually is really high-ranked education-wise. Um, it has a lot of uh, high-ranking high uh, universities. It actually has, I think, the University of Auckland is in the top 100 in the world, mm. which is quite cool. Um, plus, it's a great place to study because... Well, let's be honest. When you go study, you don't just go study. You want to make friends and you also want to experience life at its fullest, right? And in New Zealand, you're going to meet people from all around the world rather than just staying back in your home country and not really, you know, just meeting people from your own culture. In New Zealand, you'll be exposed to so many different cultures and lifestyle and stuff like that, which is quite cool. Plus, there's heaps to do. New Zealand is a country which is super easy to travel through. We literally say that all the time. You know, you hop on a bus and, you know, within an hour, you're somewhere completely different. Or you hop in a car and you can drive anywhere almost any time. If you study somewhere on the North Island, you'll be able to literally be anywhere on the North Island within half a day, which is quite amazing. Mm. Um, so, so you'll be able to discover so much about New Zealand, see so many amazing sceneries. Being in a country where people actually genuinely all Always travel. Um, despite popular beliefs, it's still a rather cheap country to travel through. You know, like, yeah, the price of gas is pretty expensive and some price of accommodation are going up. But, you know, it's pretty amazing. So you get to travel a lot. You meet heaps of people. The university are quite well recognized. It's an English-speaking country, which is always a great thing to, uh, to have on your resume. I mean, if you ask me, hell yes, yeah. go for it. Um, another thing, uh, the international student programs at all the major universities are really, really awesome. Um, obviously, they have loads of international students coming into New Zealand universities, so they cater super well to, the, to international students. And they also have really top, like, um, studying English programs. So if you are wanting to improve your English or, um, you know, get get qualifications in, you know, speaking English and stuff, then they have all those sort of programs that cater to that as well within within universities. So that's really awesome as well. And especially for international students, they have programs where they can do like, they organize day trips and stuff for exploring New Zealand and they really make an effort to make it a really nice social experience for everyone so yeah um it's yeah really awesome opportunity for international students in in New Zealand
All right. And we have loads of links, sorry. And we also have links to the different universities and the top rated universities in New Zealand um, on backpackerguide.nz. So we'll make sure to put those in the description below after this video on the rebroadcast. So make sure you come back to this video for that. Cool. That's what I was about to say. So awesome. Here you are. <laughs> it's answered. Hit like if you're happy with that. And uh, well, hit like if you're not happy with that because we don't make up the answer. We literally <laughs> just tell you facts. Um, cool. All right. So we have some more questions. So this one is going to be a quick one. Uh, Theo or Theo again, you need to tell me how to say your name, eh? Um, All right. So Theo says, new question. Perhaps this is stretching your knowledge a bit, but... Do you know much about how tight the drone laws are? I intend to make an adventure film throughout the year and uh, with epic New Zealand landscape um, to get as many shots and clips as possible. Call it a New Zealand advertisement video. Well, we actually do know quite a lot. It's, we've been filming a lot about New Zealand in the last few years and the laws are always changing. Actually, literally just behind that couch, we do have a bunch of drones. Um, so yes, we do know. And yes, they are pretty tight. So you do have, uh, in New Zealand, you do have to basically ask the permission of any landowner that you're going to be flying the drone above of. You actually have to. You cannot fly nowhere near any airport and you probably have a DJI drone. Your phone is going to tell you um, if you fly above that. Uh, you also cannot fly above 120 meters, so make sure that you stay below that. And any public land, especially the uh, beautiful national parks, which I'm pretty sure this is where you're going to want to film, you do need to fill an application with a dock, and that's going to cost you 50 bucks every time. Um, so you need to fill up the application, pay the fee, then you get your certificate. When you carry a drone around, depending on the size of your drone, um, but uh, even if it's as small as the, as the Phantom drone, you will need to carry a um, fire extinguisher just in case the drone catch fire and you need to uh, you know, kind of preserve uh, the New Zealand sceneries. So yes, there is heaps of regulation. And in fact, we do have an article on Backpacker Garden NZ which explains all of that and that we try to keep up to date all the time. Oh, there is also a website called Airshare that you have to register for most of your flights around New Zealand. So there is a lot of step for flying a drone in New yeah. Zealand and you definitely have to go through all of them. So we do have an article on backpackerguide.nz. We will link it up uh, you know, in the description below and especially when we repost this uh, question because we will repost this one because that's a question that comes up often. Yeah, for sure. um, and we will actually put the link below. Make sure to read it. It is not that easy and, um, and you have to be aware because the fines are pretty steep and people get caught. Uh, we have had uh, emails at least like from memory, at least three people in the last like two months that told us that this has been caught, fined, drone, cons drone confiscate confiscated. And um, actually one guy actually was kicked out of the country. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, just a couple of things that you might have forgotten to say. Um, another rule is that you do have to fly light Eye line of sight is line of called? sight. Yeah. Line of sight. So you do have to keep your eye on your drone at all times. You can't go and you know fly around a tree and lose sight of it. Yeah. Um, also, there is a law when it comes to flying over marine mammals. Oh. Um, you can't fly your drone directly above marine mammals unless you do go through a whole application pro pro pro. What's the word? Process. Process. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, you do have to go through a whole application process with the Department of Conservation um, in order to fly over the top of dolphins, whales, seals, for instance. And you do have to stay quite, quite far away from marine mammals. So usually it is OK to fly your drone over, you know, over the ocean and over water. But when marine mammals are involved, that's when there are laws. Yeah. yeah. All right. So again article below uh, because obviously we just scratched the surface right here. You need to be aware um, drone news is heavily regulated in New Zealand from what I've known and from all, some of the travel that I've done. New Zealand has the tightest regulation uh, that I've seen so far on that and they do enforce it. So yeah, yeah. just make sure you read that below and uh, yeah, hit like, subscribe and all of this nonsense because you know, we work really hard for all those questions. <laughs> all right, uh, taking the time to go through a few more questions in the live chat. I saw a question from Elvin. Um, last couple of questions. Well, it's not the last, if it's the last couple, man. All right, um, he's uh, gonna be moving to Auckland. All right, let me read that. Elvin, um, I'm going to be moving to Auckland on January. Would you advise me which bank that had a lot of ATMs around the city so I won't be hard for me to draw cash? Good question. Now, 
first thing first, New Zealand has actually has one of the highest rates of electronic transaction per capita, meaning that they don't use cash that much. Um, you can use your card literally everywhere. I feel like I use my, I never use cash, to be quite honest. Yeah, like, no, the, the only cash. time you would use cash would be for maybe some public bus services oh, yeah. um, around cities. But at that point, you need coins, not even, you know. No, you can still use, you can still use notes, but just make sure it's not $100 notes <laughs> because they need to give you change. Um, so, and maybe some markets, um, farmers markets, for instance. But even then, you'll be surprised at how many people in market stalls have electronic you know, card readers Well, now you stuff. can do them with your phone anyway. Like they have this little thing you plug and they actually do the transaction on the yeah. phone. They just have a little attachment. So, so, so yeah. Yeah, so mo most of the time you definitely don't need to have cash on you. There would just be a few small circumstances, but really, really yeah. minor. So yeah. Continue. Yeah, plus a lot of, uh, <laughs> plus a lot of banks have agreements. So for example, I'm banking with uh, something called the Cooperative Bank and they have an agreement with every other banks in New Zealand where I actually, I can go to the ATM and withdraw cash for free. So it doesn't matter which bank you're from. If you're with those guys, you withdraw cash for free, which is quite handy. Um, now, the biggest banks in New Zealand, you know, you have Kiwi Bank, which is also kind of the post office. So we see they're everywhere since they're the post office and, and you're going to find, um, you know, ATMs everywhere. Uh, you also have ANZ, which is uh, big and blue, sending really ATMs everywhere. And you're going to have Westpac, which has ATM everywhere. Another alternative, as I mentioned, the cooperative bank. They have an agreement with, uh, well, I think, almost every single bank where you can go to any other bank's ATM and withdraw cash without having to pay for, uh, for any fee, which is quite good. Uh, after that, there are some smaller banks like TSB and everything. But, you know, yes, they're smaller, so you can have less ATMs. So uh, I will stick to the one I just mentioned, um, you know, which is Kiwi Bank, Westpac, ANZ, or the cooperative bank. Um, that's the one that I would stick to personally, yeah. um, just so you actually have ATMs everywhere. But again, you're not going to need cash very often. New Zealand is a very paperless country, uh, paperless to the extreme, actually. So you don't, you don't really need, um, yeah, yeah, you won't need that at all. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all right, cool. All right, guys, uh, game of the day. Tell us where you guys are from. There is heaps of people from everywhere. So I know that Theo is from uh, Norway. I know that uh, we had someone that said uh, said he was from India. Sojin is from India, and that's pretty much it. Milena, where are you from? Mani, where are you from? Uh, Elvin, where are you from? Tell us where you guys are from. It maybe may, I was just going to say maybe we can just quickly quickly answer the question for. Melina in in regards to Rangitoto Island you get the ferry from the main ferry building in Auckland which is impossible to miss it's a big orange building it's right at the end of Queen Street at the waterfront Queen Street is the main street of Auckland so again you can't miss it right at the end of there on the waterfront <laughs> big orange building that is the ferry building so you take your ferry from there easy so if Laura doesn't get lost while finding that building, that means literally the easiest building. I think the second to the Sky Tower. Yeah. You know, that's literally like the Sky Tower is unmissable. The ferry building is unmissable. You know, there's no way. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, all right, cool. Let me just go have a look through some of those questions right here that we had. We received so many questions from you guys. Cool. Oh, that's a fun one. On Instagram. Um, all right. So on Instagram, Belinda Oh, oh, Belinda, um, ask us. I heard you talk so much about the rain in New Zealand and that the weather changes all the time. What is your top 10 things to do under the rain, like all over the country, not just in a specific uh, city? All right, that's actually a good question. Yes, it does rain sometimes in New Zealand. It does. It has it been does. known to rain. Yes. <laughs> um, but, but there is heaps to do here. So, obviously... Some of the options we're going to be talking to are going to be available in some cities, some towns, some are not going to be, since you ask us something pretty generic. But let's go through a few uh, a few stuff. So the first thing that comes to mind is always museum and art galleries. Yeah. There is heaps <laughs> of them. There is so many of them all around the country. And actually, quite a lot of them are really good. And as a general rule of thumb, they're actually rather cheap. Um, yeah. and, and a lot of them are free, which yeah. is quite good. But they're not, you know, it's not like the overpriced uh, stuff uh, like the Mets in, in New York and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the, you, like you said, most of them, well, yeah, most of them are free. Otherwise, they'll be maybe around 
ten dollars at the most. Um, and yeah, they're all. They, it feels like there's a museums in almost every large town in New Zealand, and it usually displays sort of the history and culture of the local area. And what's what I really love about going to see museums is that they have a lot of exhibitions about the Maori culture of the area, which I feel like is super interesting. They have lots of artifacts from the Maori culture, and so that's always worth checking out. Cool. Uh, another rainy day thing to do that Laura and I love to do is to go out for a nice hot chocolate. Yeah. Uh, so go to a coffee and go grab yourself a nice hot drink. Um, they usually have free Wi-Fi. Um, New Zealanders are really crazy about their coffee. So you're not necessarily all the time going to find a long black. You're going to have some crazy macchiatos or shorts, yeah. shorts something. Or... Yeah. And on top of that, you know, getting a coffee or grabbing a bite to eat is quite a quick thing to do. And the good thing about the rain in New Zealand is that it's usually pretty quick so it comes it just has its you know there's a, just a shower for maybe about an hour at the most and then it usually you know blows away and you got sun again so yeah that's a good good way to pass the time while it's raining is to just go grab a cup of coffee yeah that's true um speaking of doing anything to do with food we do have heaps of article about uh, cheap eats and stuff like that in uh, Backpacker Guide on NZ. So make sure to check in the comment below. We're going to be putting some uh, links there, which is all our food recommendation to, you know, you know, to enjoy the food but not break the bank, which is yeah. always cool. Anyway, keep going with things to do on the rainy day or well, brewery tools. In New Zealand has so many breweries. Like literally, there's over 300 breweries in the country and a lot of them have a tour and let you just tour their facilities and obviously taste the product, which is yeah. the best part of any tool because, you know, um, there is only three ingredients in beers, as they say very often. So the tools, uh, you know, are pretty repetitive, but the beer drinking is, you know, always welcome. Yeah. So brewery tools really awesome to do under the rain as well. Um, there's also hot pools. Yeah. Laura loves hot pools. <laughs> so, yeah, there's actually quite a lot of places around New Zealand which either have sort of areas built up for hot pools where they have like natural hot thermal spring water coming in and it's like just super way to relax um and even when it's raining it doesn't feel that bad it, it feels like the perfect rainy day activity because you feel nice and warm and then you can find lots of free hot pools around new zealand as well and um, more specifically around the topo and rotorua area in the north island they have lots of free hot pools where you need to maybe do a little bit of research as to where they are and we have links and and whole articles to every single free hot pool basically around the North Island, which we'll definitely put in the description below when we rebroadcast this video. Um, yeah, so hot pools is always a really, really awesome go to for rainy days. Um, another really cool activity, if you want to do a big activity on a rainy day, is white water rafting. So it really doesn't matter what the weather's doing when you're doing white water rafting because you're going to get wet anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, white water rafting is another option. That's awesome to do under the rain. I yeah. love that. <laughs> um, another thing to do, uh, well, that's going to be a cheeky plug right here, but uh, you know, stay around your accommodation and go online and plan the next leg of your trip. And to do that, use backpackerguide.nz. You know, we work really hard making that guide. So you know, usually what happened to us when we're on the road, when, you know, there is a big heavy rain or something like that coming up. Again, it only lasts a few hours in New Zealand, so it's not too crazy. But, you know, if you if you have that, we usually sit down and be like, okay, what are we doing next week? Or how are we planning this? And, you know, so like that, we always we always ahead in our planning. So it's a great way to do that. And, you know, a good resource is, you know, Backpacker Guide on NZ. <laughs> Shameless plug right here. Yeah. Anyway, next one, get a tattoo. It's a bit of a commitment right here. But, you know, if you're planning on getting a tattoo and it's raining outside, may as well do it today because, you know, the weather doesn't matter when you get a tattoo. So if you're planning on getting yourself a tattoo, which New Zealand has a huge tattoo culture, we actually have plenty of articles about tattooing in New Zealand. So, you know, yeah. check, check in the link below. But, yeah, get yourself a tattoo. The next one is fishing. I know very little about fishing, but I've heard that when it rains, uh, usually you can apparently, catch more fish. Yeah, but... that's the best time to do it, apparently. Yeah, so. but <laughs> but again, every fisherman has like, you know, one tip or it's contrary. And, you know, you ask another one, it's completely opposite. So um, try your hand at fishing. Yeah. Um, now, there are a few places, let's say Auckland, Rotorua, Queenstown, Queenstown, which have like those kind of indoor entertainment center where you can do go-karting, laser tag, uh, escape rooms, yeah. mini golf, those kind of things. They're, they're worth considering, especially if you're traveling with a group. I mean, escape rooms are a lot of fun and actually rather cheap, especially if you get a group of people. So if you're traveling alone or just as a couple, 
well, go in a hostel lobby and try to gather some people around because, you know, it can be, get, get down to like 10, per, 10 bucks a person, uh, which is, you know, rather cheap for yeah. that, that afternoon of fun. Yeah, um, and we actually have videos to a lot, yeah. of, lot of those sort of activities. Um, so we'll make sure to link up to those in the description too after this video. Whereas we have, oh, hang out at the hostel. I personally really love hanging out at the hostel. There's always <laughs> heaps of people from all around the world. Uh, you know, you get to know different cultures, play card games, play pool, play... Uh, table soccer uh, what is that foosball game? foosball you know like there is yeah. heaps of stuff to do or just cook at the hostel for once actually treat yourself to something else than pasta with a can of tuna in it uh, that can be <laughs> yeah you know that can be quite nice um scuba diving a yeah. water activity you don't care what's happening outside because you're in the water anyway and yeah. there's some really awesome scuba diving spots around new zealand there's poor nights islands there's around the bay of islands there is in the coromandel area mercury islands again we'll link to all those videos because we've done some scuba diving yeah. we'll link to those in the description below as well uh speaking of videos we will link to the video when we visited i did the cruise in milford sound oh my gosh it was pouring down with rain it was awful awful rain but we loved it. We loved every second of it because it felt like it felt like amazing adventure. And yeah. on top of that, well, it made the whole place look so much better. We personally do like hiking under the rain and doing those kind of activities because you get so much more waterfall. Like every single pound of mountains had like twenty waterfall in. It was amazing. So Milford Sound under the rain. Awesome. Yeah. Don't cancel your trip. Definitely go. So on that note as well, doing even doing hikes under the rain, as long as you're not going to any dangerous places like yeah. alpine places, which could turn to snow and that could, you know, that's not ideal for hiking. But if you're sort of in forest areas, yeah. then hiking under the rain is actually pretty fun. And I know we talk a lot about having a rain jacket on this channel, but if you have a really good rain jacket in New Zealand, just head out into the rain, enjoy going for a hike under the rain in the forests and stuff. And that's, it's really fun. Yeah. It's usually the, then the hiking trails are empty of other people. And then you have all this beautiful, like vibrant green forest around you. It's just, yeah, it's just, awesome. just do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Other activities to do under the rain, winery tools, uh, self-explanatory. You're going in a bus and then you're going to a winery indoors and you taste some awesome wines. You are often paired with amazing food. So why not? That's pretty awesome. Um, go to the gym. Uh, you know, need to keep that godlike body, right? <laughs> uh, and also read a good book. Uh, well, maybe we suggest uh, Lord of the Rings or Hobbits. Uh, it's kind of on theme, so why not? Um, so yeah, so that's plenty of stuff that you can do under the rain. There is no shortage of stuff to do under the rain, especially if you're not too much of a Nancy Pensy and you're willing to get out and go get wet. Honestly, it's so awesome, New Zealand, especially under the rain. We love it. It usually make, make for really compelling pictures and videos. So, yeah. Belinda. And Sorry, oh, sorry I, I was just going to say, if, you, if you're finding any of these answers useful, make sure to give us a like in the video and also on the rebroadcast as well, just to let us know that things are, things are being answered to, to your standards, to your yeah. liking. <laughs> to your standard. <laughs> All right, cool. How oh, Elvin is leaving us. Bye-bye, Elvin. Thank you very much for popping in. That was really awesome of yours. We'll probably see you next week. Guys, we'll be here exactly the same time next week as well, but we're not done just yet. Nope. We have a good 20 minutes left with you guys. So we go through some more questions. I don't see anything really new on the chat. So we'll go through uh, some more questions. Uh, so we received a question from Suzanne on Facebook. And she says, please help in all capital letters. So I'm panicking. What is going on? She say, I am stuck for ideas about gift to bring back home. What? Please help in capital letter for that? Anyway, she says, I want something really New Zealand and not too touristy. Thanks. All right, first up, Suzanne, don't make us panic like that. My heart almost stopped. It's crazy. Um, but let's talk about souvenirs. Yes, that is actually something that you always leave for the last minute and you never and prepare. And then you panic and then yeah. you're like, what do I buy? And then you type in capital letter to us on Facebook, please help. Um, all right, so Suzanne, so, I just did find that very funny. I did love that message. Um, so yes. Most people don't prepare what they want to get for gifts, but I personally hate shopping and I also want my trip to be about, you know, experiencing stuff and not going from one shop to the other. Mm. So I usually make my list like early in advance, even sometimes before I go to places, I make my list. So it's all done. And I know after I just have to spend about an hour finding those things. And so I can spend most of my trip doing something else. So here's some ideas for you. So gifts, which are typically New Zealand. Um, first, 
anything to do with jade. So that's green stone that's very significant in kind of, uh, you know, the Maori culture. Uh, you can get some necklaces. You can get some, actually, they even do rings. Yeah, they um, do earrings. They do basically all sorts of jewelry. And you get tokens as well, like some, you know, like, like tiki tokens like yeah. and, and stuff. So you get plenty of stuff do, to do with jade. Um, I like most, actually, just a green stone without it being carved, just a little bit polished. Um, I think they look really awesome. So, yeah, green stone very easy um it, it, the prices are all over the place so you can get something rather cheap to something crazy expensive i mean yeah. we saw some some sculpture last time we went to the oakland airport there was a shop and uh, one of the sculpture was on discount at sixty five thousand uh new zealand dollars so wow but yeah yeah um but on top of that you could also carve your own greenstone yeah. pendants which is a really awesome activity to do in new zealand and that's something that we've done a couple of times when doing new zealand's biggest gap year which by the way guys if you haven't seen that just yet that's when robin and i did 365 days around new zealand doing 365 activities Activities. So if you do want to watch videos on pretty much any activity in New Zealand, we probably have a video about it. So that's <laughs> definitely worth checking out. I will link up to the playlist of New Zealand's biggest gap year in the description below after this broadcast. Yes, so getting sure. back to our souvenirs, um, something else you could be getting are uh, chocolates or candy, like New Zealand specific chocolates or candy. Kiwis are crazy about New Zealand chocolates and or lollies. Instead of calling them candy, they call all general candy lollies. Um, Which did confuse Laura at the it beginning. It did because yeah, in the UK, a lolly is just one is just that thing on a stick, like, like a lollipop, like a lollipop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, then, speaking of chocolate, I just want to point out yeah. one that I love. Um, on almost every souvenir shop you're gonna find for chocolate, you have some. You have a bag of sheep droppings, which obviously means sheep poop which is quite funny some chocolate literally like in little bowls like that which looks like sheep poop but it's actually chocolate it's just such a kiwi thing to do and yeah. i think that's really funny but a yeah. really cool uh chocolate brand that everyone goes mad for when they come to new zealand is whitakers they're just sort of large chocolate blocks and they come with different like sort of flavors and fillings usually like hazelnuts and stuff but then something maybe a little bit more kiwi which is l and p flavored and LMP is the local sort of soft drink in it's like New a Zealand. lemonade but that, that yeah. tastes a bit more like lemon another yeah. one's actually a hockey pokey Hockey-pokey, which is very yeah. very kiwi it's kind of uh you get some honey you kind of make it harden you just smash it with the hammer and there's a lot of bits and pieces and you put that in chocolate otherwise so, known as honeycomb yeah okay yeah. <laughs> but they call it hockey pokey here yeah um anyway moving on because laura today is talking a lot about the lord rings and chocolate uh, <laughs> i can go a little bit nuts when it comes to the lord of the rings mary the wool items as a yeah. souvenir as well is uh you know it's very much new zealand mary the wool um you can get uh like laura actually did for her mum some uh thread to go knitting um yeah. so that's the basics and so it's made of mary the wool but there's plenty of mary the wool um mary the wool items as well which you know um, yeah, it's very kiwi, very much. Um, any wine or beer made in New Zealand, it's always cool to bring some uh, some stuff like that, yeah. which is quite cool. Yeah, locally um, made wine or beer is always good. Yeah, uh, You can always go for merchandise, which is quite famous, like famous brands in New Zealand. For instance, the All Blacks, which are the national rugby team. If you have anyone in your family or friends that likes rugby, then getting some All Blacks, like mugs or, yeah. you know, any sort or of jersey. merchandise. Yeah, definitely the... the the jerseys are the popular ones. You also it. get some Lord of the Rings merchandise. There you go. <laughs> go to Hobbiton, get yourself some like an elf robe or something. That's always funny. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, one of the biggest, uh, one of the most known thing about New Zealand to bring back is Manica honey. Uh, it's something that you can only find in New Zealand. It has a lot of uh, medicinal purposes. Um, it's a massive business here in New Zealand and it tastes really awesome. So Manica honey, typical New Zealand stuff, definitely worth, um, worth getting. It's, it's a unique New Zealand gift and it's not like a kind of a cliche kind of gift. Um, but another thing that I personally used to do, and I think it's pretty cool is to send postcards. So, you know, every time you go to like a different city, you send a postcard of that city. And instead of having to bring back gifts or all this and that, especially, you know, if it's your parents, something like that, you just send one postcard for each of those places. I think it's really fun. And it gives yeah. that kind of like a little album because then you get back home and you get one of those 
postcard sleeve albums and then you just have a postcard album from all the places you've been to so i think it's a good way to do gifts yeah, and stuff so that's cute yeah that's, <laughs> that, that's quite a fun one yeah um again we do have another article on backpacker guide with all these suggestions so we'll make sure to link that in the description as well and if you do like the answers remember to give us a like and if you're new here consider subscribing as well so we do everything about traveling in new zealand so this is this channel is pretty much the place to be and you'll want to subscribe and if you have any questions put them in the comment below we get to it right now or we get to it next week all right another question uh do you want to take this one here it's from abby yeah abby yeah uh yeah so hey is it possible to make a maori theme tour learning about maori culture and getting the full maori experience in northland again i'll just read that um again so abby says hey is it possible to make a maori themed tour learning about the maori culture and getting the full maori experience so um so yes there yeah. is actually quite a few of those tools um especially on the north island which is where you want to um do that so it's quite yeah definitely all right let's go over a few ones if you are going to Rotorua, which is definitely uh, one of the hot spots for Maori culture in new zealand you will have plenty of options you have tamaki uh, matai uh, you even have one at the, the Waimangu Valley. Waimangu Valley. You have one at Tepuya as well. So there is quite a lot of different ones. Now, let's take the example of Tamaki, which we actually have a video about. Um, and we put the link in the description below. Um, it's very typical of what you will get. So usually you are picked up from the uh, Oak, the Auckland, the Rotorua city center. You get onto a bus and then you arrive at the village where you will have a, a ceremony. Um, your group we'll have to pick a chief. Once you pick a chief, Laura, take us through it. Yeah, so once you pick a chief, then you go through a sort of welcoming ceremony before stepping into the Maori village, and this is called a pofiri. And yeah, this is just a really good way to sort of get a taste for the Maori culture and what the traditional culture used to be like. And you'd still need to go through pofiris in any type of Maori sort of like situation, if you're going on to a marae, and a marae is a Maori meeting house, you would have to go through a pofiri before stepping into the meeting grounds of a Maori, of a marae. So yeah, there's a and also what's really cool about doing a pofiri with tamaki is that they they go through the sort of um they go through the pofiri and they talk in te reo Maori, which is the language of the Maori, but they also go through it in English as well, just to explain the dis different aspects of it and really explain it well to people. So you do get to learn a lot as well. Once that is done, um, so it's kind of a you know rather lengthy ceremony, but once that is done, then you're going to go through um, the little village, the traditional Maori village, where you go to different stations where one of the warrior or one of the um, you know Maori lady is actually explaining you something about the different uh, about the Maori culture. So some are going to be talking about the tattoos, or you can ask them a lot of questions. Some are going to talk about the waka, which is the Maori war canoe. Some are going to teach you some games. Uh, you know, you can play with the poise, which is um, basically two balls attached with a string, and you can do some dance with it. So you're going to learn a lot about the Maori culture while you move through the village. And then you move on to the hangi revelation. What is the hangi, Laura? Yeah, so the hangi is a traditional way of making food in the Maori culture where they sort of slow cook food in an underground oven. And it takes like all day to do. My mouth um, is watering. Just yeah, talk you about but it. the end result is absolutely amazing. You have like really nice slow cooked meats. You have like root vegetables, particularly kumara and kumara is sweet potato in new zealand um, and it just tastes so much better than any sweet potato i've had anywhere else in the world um yeah lots of really nice vegetables as well and of course they always bring out dessert too yeah. so but that happens so they they reveal the hangi to everyone but you don't actually eat the hangi until a little bit later on that's sort of the last thing you get to do at the end of the night but while they're preparing the hangi and getting that all ready for you you get to go in and watch a cultural performance so you guys might have heard of the haka um which is like the war dance and chant so you'll definitely get to witness that which when you actually see a haka live it's super compelling and amazing to watch it's quite powerful yeah and they also do some sort of like traditional dancing 
and singing and that's known as kapa haka in Maori and yeah that goes through over like there's love songs there's there's also more like sort of warrior dances as well so that's really awesome to watch as well and any sort of Maori tour that you'll do in Rotorua will involve some cultural performances. Yep and then after that you are going to the eating room and you just eat and stuff yourself with this awesome hangi. Then after you head back on the bus and they drop you back in Rotorua. So that's basically kind of like the classic Maori tour that you would get in Rotorua. There is also a lot of different Maori tours to do in New Zealand. You know, I remember doing one in Waimarama, yeah. which we're going to link to below where we were following a lovely gentleman, which, what was his name? Roger, his name right? is Rob, I think. Rob. Yeah. Rob. So, oh, yeah. That's my name. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, he was taking us through his ancestors' land and showing us all the places and everything. So, that was a very, very like genuine and, and that was really, really awesome. It's more of an intimate experience where you get to ask a lot of questions and it's just like basically hanging out with a local. Yeah. Um, but that is that is like a proper tour and you can actually go and do that. So, mm. yeah. But, but all the, all, overall, the Maori culture is very present in New Zealand. It's very well respected by by most of the people in the tourism industry. And and it's it, yeah, there is a lot of different aspects of the Maori culture that you can experience through a lot of different tours. You know, even sometimes doing some uh, white water rafting tours, actually, we've had uh, Maori guys that was telling us, you know, local legends about the river that we were going through. So you will experience the Maori culture throughout almost everywhere where you go. Yeah. Sometimes it's as simple as a beautiful carved house where you actually, you know, stop in front and, uh, and you know, get a bit of an explanation through the carving what it means, which is, which is quite awesome. Yeah. So you won't really miss the Maori culture when traveling around the North Island. To be fair, not when traveling the South Island either, but, you know, you, like don't, don't feel like you have to seek that really, really hard. It will come to you as well. You jump onto you um, quite often. So you will check out the Maori culture. That's almost for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So I hope that uh, this uh, did answer your question, Abby. Again, heaps of videos and links for you below. And any extra questions, put them in the comments below because we're here to help, right? Right. Cool. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to go through one last question because I wrote it down and, uh, and you know, we really needed to uh, go through that. Um, and this one comes from uh, Anja, and she sent us an email. Um, Anja, by the way, take the time to tell us where you're from, because we were kind of trying to guess where that name was from. All right. So Anja says, by email, I want to travel around New Zealand by bus because I do not have a driver's license. There are so many options and so many companies. I'm overwhelmed. How do I get started with that? I will be in New Zealand for nine weeks. Thanks. Well, All right. indeed, there is a lot to do for, uh, you know, trying to plan a trip around New Zealand by bus. There is a lot of options. So what we're going to be doing, because we have so much content about bus and Backpacker Guide on NZ, we'll obviously um, give you some, um, some links below so you can actually do more research. But we'll give you a quick overview of the three main ways to travel by bus. Because what I feel is that if you want to travel around New Zealand by bus, first thing first is you choose what type of bus you want to take what type of experience you want. Mm -hmm. Then after you can pick kind of your itinerary and that's going to help you choose your company basically. So we'll go through the first section first and we we'll give you a bit of information about all the different companies and we we'll link to a lot of extra information below. And I think that's going to really help you um, plan your trip and decide how you want to travel by bus. So three types of buses in New Zealand. There is coach buses, hop on, hop off, and tour buses. So let's start with coach buses. Um, there is only one company that has tour buses, coach buses in New Zealand. Yeah. And that's Intercity. Yeah, there used to be, you might have heard of Naked Bus or Mana Bus, but they are gone now. It is just Intercity that you can take the coach with around New Zealand. Just a quick note on that. So the Mana Bus and Naked Bus website still work. If you book it, you will be booked on Intercity Bus. So may as well go straight with Intercity. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, so Intercity, they literally take you to most towns in New Zealand. They, they are the nationwide coach. Um, and you sort of, you, 
you can book your ticket in three different ways with Intercity. You can either just book a ticket to go from A to B. Say you want to go from Auckland to Rotorua, then you can just get a bus ticket for that. Or, you know, in, in the South Island, if you want to go from Queenstown to Tiana, you can do that with Intercity as well. Um, but another way of booking tickets with Intercity is by getting a flexi pass, which means that you book a certain amount of hours to use with Intercity. And then you can sort of book whatever trip you want through that. So if you want to do those A to B trips, you just pay with the hours that you have purchased rather than paying the full price of a bus ticket every each time. And that will save you a little bit of money by getting a flexi pass. And then the third way of using, uh, well, paying for the intercity bus is through a travel pass which basically takes you on a set route around the country and you just pay the one price and there'll be a few activities included. For instance, there'll be a dolphin cruise in the Bay of Islands. They might include Hobbiton in there, maybe a Milford Sound cruise as well. Um, so that is a good option to go for if you have very limited time. But as um, Angela said, she has nine weeks, so she might want to go for one of the other passes like a flexi pass or just paying from A to B. So what would be the pros and cons of traveling with a coach bus? Yeah, so uh, for, the, for the coach bus, the pro is that it can take you pretty much anywhere. Um, but the con, I would say, is that it is, it's a little hard to socialize on those buses because it's used by both travelers and locals, which I mean, usually it's just people wanting to get from A to B. They're kind of like use it as a commuting service rather than a travel bus. Um, so yeah, that is probably one of the cons. Whereas the other buses that we're about to talk to you about now, they would be a lot more social and would feel more like that sort of vacation, holiday, traveling experience. Um, they're just a few quick pros and cons. Um, All right, do you want next to say one. Yeah. On that or? No, I mean for the coach bus, I think that you you nailed it. Um, so obviously, coach buses is another great great way to travel around. But other type of buses include hop on hop offs. So now that can get a little bit confusing about what the hell is hop on hop off. But basically, you buy a bus tour around New Zealand, and those companies allow you to literally hop off the bus. So let's say you you know you do a trip, you know, Auckland to Rotorua to, you know, Wellington, for instance, you can hop off in Rotorua and stay a couple of weeks there or a couple of days there and then get back onto the next bus afterwards. So those are basically a mix between coach bus and tour buses because along the way, you will be doing activities, you'll be traveling with a group of like-minded people and it's basically a bus tour for one day, each trip around. So this is, this is kind of like the way when you want... Coach bus to be more fun and easier. Um, through the bus driver, you'll be able to book some activities. You will have some stops at like some really main main staples and main things to do. Like let's say in the glowworms, you know, you arrive over there in the way to more where you can do the glowworms. You arrive over there and they already kind of pre-book you to go do those things if you want to. Um, and it's really awesome. So this is kind of like really easy kind of way to travel around. Now, the pros for that is that you travel with like-minded people. It's much more flexible than the bus tour. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's rather cheaper than the bus tour as well. And it allows you to kind of make your itinerary as as long or as short as you want, which is quite good. Now, the cons is that it's obviously much more expensive than what it is with um, Intercity. With Intercity that, that's for sure. Um, it's also, uh, it also kind of forces you to be with a group of people so maybe you you really want your solo or just couple travel experience you don't want to be with those guys so, uh, maybe you don't want to go for that and another con is the fact that in summer it gets really fully booked so you probably won't have much of the flexibility and you will have to book everything rather in advance now for um for the hop on hop of bus we have a lot of articles as well so in the comment below we even have some articles on how to save a lot of money when booking those things so make sure to read the article below about hop on hop of buses and there are two or three companies for that uh, thinking flying kiwi kiwi experience and uh, stray so that's three of them right here um so yes yeah, so that's for hop on hop off so if that's your vibe that's where you're gonna you know start your research engine so make sure that you know like you check okay coach or hop on hop off and the last one is a tour two bus companies so this is the thing like sweet as travel um contiki uh top deck. top deck uh g adventure 
uh, stray adventures or whatever, Hackatools. stray journeys. Yeah, uh, hacker tools. I mean, there is ton there of is. bus tour companies, and so yeah. Pros and cons and a bit of a description. Yeah, so Coach Tour is basically following a set route around the country or around us, you know, either just the North Island or the South Island. You're with the same group of people for the whole time. You're with the same driver and it's just a set amount of days that you're going to be doing it. So if you take a Coach Tour for nine days, you'll do the trip around for nine days going to this. You have a very set itinerary, basically. Um, and there'll be a few activities included along the way. But a lot of the time, these are the cheapest sort of activities or free activities that you would get to access for free anyway. For instance, usually a geothermal park is included, like the Wyo Tapu in Rotorua is always included in those coach tours. Hobbiton may sometimes be included. Um, and then a free, some free sites to see along the way. But on these coach tours, you do have the option to do some extra activities at an added cost. Like you can opt to do whitewater rafting or skydiving. And then obviously you'll have to pay extra to do those activities. But you still get the opportunity to do those activities and choose which ones you want to do. Um, the pros to that is that it is absolutely stress-free. You don't have to really plan anything you just choose what you want to do or if you want to do anything and just enjoy the ride along the way every you know the whole driving is side for you um and all the planning side for you your accommodation is side for you um because yes on those coach tours most of the time well all the time they plan the accommodation for you that's all included in the price and most meals are included as well usually dinner uh usually breakfast sometimes lunch isn't in isn't included but they will give you opportunity to stop along the way and pick up and buy some lunch from cafes and stuff so yeah um pros stress-free cons is that it's far less flexible so yeah. if you do want to have you know a more spontaneous trip there's not really the room to do that on those coach tours do you have any other um, um no i'll be honest with you Angela. if you're here for nine weeks i don't think you're going to go for a, a bus tour um just because there are you know they none of them are nine weeks yeah. so i personally feel that you will be hesitating between um you know coach bus like intercity and a hop on hop of bus so it's up to you to weigh the pros and cons we have plenty of articles if you do have some any follow-up questions or anything like that make sure you put them in the comment below we publish these questions especially for you but i'm pretty sure a lot of people are asking themselves the same kind of question at the moment so it helps everybody to put the questions below so we can get to them when we go live we literally have a list of questions right here and that's thanks to all of you guys so it helps everybody to have those things i know for example natalie which is still right here live with us you have plenty more questions for us to go through and we'll go through all of them uh don't worry it's just going to take us a few weeks because we have so many um and uh, yeah it does help everybody and obviously if you do like our video if you do like the work that we're doing well hit the like button hit the subscribe button it really genuinely helps us because you know that helps us get more views and that just encourages us to do it um to do it more often and uh yeah we'll be back here next week um we'll be back here next week so again it's going to be sunday 8 a.m new zealand time and you're going to see on the repost of any of those videos we put the time in your country so you know when to find us but same time same place next week Thank you very much, guys, for joining us. Yeah, thank and, you. Yeah. <laughs> Keep on sending us questions. Qu comments in the question. Is that co questions, questions in, in the, the comments, comments below? below. <laughs> there you go. Questions in the comment below. Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Twitter, all of those things. Hit us up. Send us the questions. Um, all right. Thank you very much, guys. Bye bye. Thank See you. you.